Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello. Looks like your buddy's back there uh, getting some sweet feed. You know what? A lot of people have been asking us how the grafting process went. Well, it wasn't without its challenges, right? but it went fairly smoothly. She's mm -hmm. a sweet cow and he went through some scours. Now, because this is an educational show, we can get kind of gross, which is when they're, they got kind of diarrhea and it's yellow colored, yeah. if you really want to get frank about it. But you know what? Once we gave him a little bit of medicine, we talked to our friend Beth on the phone, we gave him a little bit of medicine. Uh, she didn't want there for a while, she kind of cast him aside, but Worried. once, like you said, that milk got flowing through, right. everything was good. Once the scours cleared up, now you can tell they've really grown since last time you've seen them. Now he's starting to pick up a little bit of interest in the sweet feed. And, before long, when they're ready, I'm gonna really start popping that sweet feed to them. Now we've got an Angus slash Brown Swiss and then a Jersey, wherever he is. Now you can see he's got a lankier frame. He's skinnier, they, you know, the bones, right. you can see the bones when they're calves, but he's really growing good. She's letting him feed, everything so good so far. She's even cleaning him up. Like she's she cleaning him up, like they're, she, they're, you, she, she thinks that's her kid now. Yeah. So everything's going really well. Now we have a great recipe for you now, one of my absolute favorites. Sometimes you gotta have some good Mexican food. Yeah, you do. And tonight, in a Dutch oven. Always. Cowboy cooking <laughs> style. I can't hardly wait. Because Starving. you like enchiladas, right? Right. Well, we're gonna do that over an open fire. Man, when you get that smoky flavor in there, you just can't beat it. And you know, we haven't done anything Mexican for a good while. Do you remember our friend Naibi? I do. Who is back in Mexico now. Dear, wonderful, sweet person, she shared us one of her favorite recipes and we really thought, how in the world are we gonna eat a cow head? <laughs> well, she came in and she brought a cow head with her. Yes, she did. And it was some of the best eating. Now, this is traditional stuff. Here's a little clip. That's real mm -hmm. Mexican food. Naibi has the touch. She can really cook. Yes, she can. And Maybelle's very happy. She's had her sweet feed. She's almost eaten all that. We have worked very hard today. It's time for us to eat. So That's right. up to the cabin. Okay. All right. Enchiladas. Yum. Sound yummy? I'm starving. Enchilada sauce. You can buy it or you can make it. Now you think about it, it's red, red colored. Yeah. If you do the red enchilada sauce. What is the thing that makes it that color? It's the chili powder. Really? That's your red color. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with five tablespoons of oil mm -hmm. and five tablespoons of flour as your base. Then we're gonna put that over the fire cook that down for just about a minute and then start adding the ingredients. Five tablespoons of chili powder. You want a little salt to taste. One teaspoon of cumin. And the last thing we do is we're gonna put about four, four and a half cups of chicken stock in there. We're gonna cut up some fresh oregano. We'll take, I don't know, half a tablespoon of that. Two cloves of garlic. Let's put in that very fine, cut that up. Then we're gonna reduce the heat and simmer that till it thickens up just a bit. Then we set it aside. Then we're ready to start stacking yep. and making our wonderful, wonderful meal here. Okay, Nikki, you remember what is it? 350 degrees. I do remember. What is it? <laughs> Eight on the bottom yeah. and 17 on the top. You're exactly right? right. Do I win a prize? You get a gazillion trillion dollar. Wow. I'm looking forward to this meal. I really, really am. Cut the onion and the pepper. We're not going to need that whole pepper. All right. We'll take a onion. Get here in the open air. It won't, shouldn't be as bad today. Yeah, I won't cry. Then we went to Maggie. Had an unsupervised. Well, it was supervised, but I think we took our eyes off of them for just enough time for her and Moe's to kiss. They sang reunited. <laughs> and we gonna probably has a puppy shortly because she's she, her belly's hanging low to the ground. And she's got that. So she's so sweet. You know, she, she wants to be hugged and when she's in the family way. I'm actually kind of excited I like puppies. No, you can't. You can't not like puppies. And every time, we, they have the most unique little personalities. They do. This is coming along nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little oil in the skillet. More pepper than that, nope, or is that enough? Nope, there's plenty of pepper. All right, let's get the onions and peppers going. Smell the magic. 
I'll tell you what let's do. Let's take about a pound and a half of chicken, cut that into strips, just little chunks. All right, at this point, I'm gonna put some cumin in, teaspoon and a half, and then I'm gonna take some cayenne. Just a dash, you don't need too much. Now, Nikki, if you will, bring the chicken over and we'll pop that right on top of this. Now, if you can imagine, first of all, you know what hickory smells like when it's cooking. And then you add this, the peppers and the onions and the chicken, are you kidding me? Now, while the chicken's cooking, Nikki's gonna mix up a little cornmeal. So we're gonna go cup and three quarters of cornmeal, one egg, and oh, I don't know, about a cup of buttermilk, if you got it. If not, you can use just milk. Now that's gonna go on the top of this whole conglomeration. And what we're gonna do too, is we're gonna add to that cornbread some cut up, already pickled jalapenos, and that adds a wonderful flavor as well. And a little bit of heat. Let's add some beans and corn. This is a whole meal. Next step, over to the other pan. All right, here's where it starts. It starts getting lovely. A scoop of this. See where we're going here? I do, it looks good. Then a tortilla. Sauce. See how that's thickened up? Yeah. Is it set there? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yummy. I'm excited. How serious? long's it got to cook? About a half like hour. This. Half hour. Okay. There. I think we'll go one more layer. Then we're gonna put the cornbread across the top. Yeah. It's gonna seal it up. Now, we're gonna seal it all up with some cornbread. Then we're gonna top this with cheese. This is a very yummy, easy recipe. All right, here we go. Now this has been sitting a while, so I'm gonna put some more coals on top of it. Remember, gotta maintain that 350 temperature. All right, I'm gonna check that in about 25 minutes. Now we mentioned that Magnolia is in the family way, but let's, let's go back and see how this whole thing started back in the day. It wasn't that long ago, almost two years ago, right. we brought Moses in. Oh, okay. he's so little. Okay, there's a reason we came outside. We told you the stork was coming. Well, the stork is coming. We're looking for Moses. Moses is gonna be our guard dog for Mavis, Myrtle, and Milkweed. So, uh oh, here we go, right now. Moses has made his entrance. We've been waiting all day for Moses. <laughs> this is Megan. Megan, tell us, tell us first of all where Moses came from, which farm? Moses is from Four Harper Farms of Benton, Kentucky, or very far western Kentucky, we say Callaway, but. And they raise these dogs just for this purpose? Yes, just for the purpose of herding and staying with livestock and protecting livestock. We call them polar bears at my house because they're just so fluffy. And we got nine of them running around that look like little oh polar bears. Oh my, look at say this hi. little man. Hey Moses, how you doing buddy? So, hi. now here's the thing. They're be. protection animals for the, the goats or the sheep or whatever. Different people have different purposes. Some people like donkeys, some people mm -hmm. like dogs, some people like llamas or alpacas, but at our house we prefer the dogs. So he is not gonna get too much attention like a normal mm -hmm. dog. So he's gonna mainly bond with the sheep. Mm -hmm. Let's go take him away. Okay. Hey girls, hey girls. Come here girls, hey girls. How's that girl? Looky here. Look at that baby. Look at that baby. See the baby? That's just a baby. That's just a baby. And this is how it starts. You know, they got to get used to him. It. It's going to take some bonding and some time. We, we go from uh, Sunday to Tuesday. But once they figured out a couple days later that he's here to not hurt them, well, it's turned out really well. And we're trying to be hands off as much as we can. And he's really keen on them. He wants to be around them. 
And if we come up unexpected, you gotta hear him bark. Just a tiny little puppy bark. One day will sound like a big vicious bark. He's not cute or anything. And the girls are happy with him now. Everybody's buddies and pals. And every now and then we accidentally reach down and pet him on the head. We don't mean to, but we just can't hardly resist, can we, motors? You gotta be, you gotta be a mean guard dog and we can't pet you too much because you're vicious and hateful and you're gonna take everybody very seriously. No bad coyotes are gonna get in here. This is Milkweed, who is very personable. She likes to have her head scratched. This is Mavis, who's the leader. That's Myrtle, who's the stomper. And uh, these are our girls. They are gonna be um, our broodstock. They're probably gonna die of old age and be very happy on the farm here. And Moses, he's the protector over there by Nikki's feet. And then see how Maggie came into his life. You ready? I am ready. I'm excited. All right. Turn it here one. As it happens, we're about to meet our little baby Maggie. Watch what she want now. Magnolia. Is that the mama? The mama. Boy, our dog Moses. <laughs> Look at that baby. Look at that baby. <laughs> what about you, girl? Oh my! Look at that. Look at that baby. What a fatty. She's eating oh good. My. Seven days. What about you doing? You the only girl? You're the only girl, no panda bear. Oh, the only girl. Oh my goodness. She's sweet. All right, here we are. This is not uh, set up, this is real time. Moses is about to meet Magnolia here. Who's that? Who's that? Okay, let's go over this way. Let's go up here on the hill in the sunshine. Who's that? Here we go. Who's that? Who's nice. that? Set her down, set her down. See the baby? Look at the baby. Look at the baby. Yeah, that's a baby. Look at the baby. What about, like, what is this? Just let them be, see what they do. See the baby? See the baby? What's about that baby girl? You got a buddy. Aw, is she nice? Well, the good thing is, is that Magnolia was raised with all kinds of critters, burrows and look, look at her stomping like a deer. He's kind of protective of her. Did you see that? I hope he is. So let's just stand back and see what they do. Then we snuck out behind the trees to watch to make sure nobody was going to get too rough and it looked like things were going to be just fine. And they met and they fell and in they love met, instantly. They <laughs> fell in love. 
We had a ceremony up on the hill yes, up here we did. under the stars. Aww. And they absolutely fell in love and were blessed with these little puppies. They are the most loving, yes, sweet animals in the world. Sometimes we do recipes that are almost silly because they're so simple. And that's because a couple weeks ago we did a show where it was just chicken with the dry rub. So good. Vegetable. But it's so simple, so good. Sometimes we question, is it too simple? Now that obviously took some time and there's a lot of mixture and stuff going on, but it's so worth right. the wait. But sometimes if you're going to be on the road mm -hmm. and you've got Dutch ovens with you and you've got a cake mix, <laughs> special things happen. Tell us That's what right. you're going to do. Well, you know how you want to make, everybody loves cookies, but this is an easy way to make quick cookies, a cake mix. Think about it. It's got all the baking powder, everything's in. It's already there. So this is something that Kelly was telling me about that she heard. So just, I'm going to use a spice cake mix too because I like that spice or carrot. I'm going to do one whole cake mix. Two of our eggs. Okay. One thing about this, we're not going to add water to it because we want to turn these kind of into cookies. So you want them not, yeah. not to be too terribly mixed. Right. And now I'm going to add some L8, two tablespoons to give it some ginger flavor. And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and put in two, this is two tablespoons of oil. So we kind of followed the cake mix. We just got rid of one egg and we got rid of the water. And that'll make it a little bit more like a cookie texture. It's not. Oh, wow. So it won't be as runny as a cake mix. It's going to be thicker. So it'll make it a little more doughy. Yeah, so this is a, cookie -like. it's a quick way to make cookies, isn't it? It is a quick way to make cookies. Now also, I thought, I don't know what you think about it, is those nuts that you smoked. Oh, yeah. I thought maybe some of those, and I brought you up some chocolate chips if you're wanting to oh. put some of those in these cookies. Now, stacking. You may have seen this on a show before, but if you have not, if you have a 12-inch pan, think about putting a 10-inch on top of that. Something, or you can put another 12-inch on top of that as well. But you've already got the charcoal going, or you've already got your fire going if you need to put chunks of that on there but long story short we got two ovens going now that's right so this is only going to take what 15 minutes 20 right. minutes for for cookies and we can set that aside if we have to but we got a meal and a dessert now you can stack 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 i've seen people go four or five high we're we're not cooking for that many today but that's looking good there Ms. all right i'm going to get you some some candy and some nuts how's that so nice you can decorate good. our cookies all right, I've got some white chocolate chips. What do you think? I think that'll be perfect for that. Just a couple of those in there. Just mix them up in there. All right. Oh, that smells so good. I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple of cookies. Just make them about think, that big. And if you want to put a, maybe one of those smoked nuts on each one. And the thing about this is, you got your Dutch oven going, and if this isn't enough, you just keep popping them in there. Ooh, how about some cashews? Why would that That'd not be, good, be too. good? And those are those smoked nuts that are delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna set this over here on top of our existing 12 inch pan. All right, our light is dwindling. We're gonna to have to get some stuff done here. Now we're gonna take some charcoal, put on top of that. Okay, now that'll be done in just a minute, but in the meantime, how about a little traveling music with our buddy from the UK, Connor Thomas. This song's called Chopping Clothes.
as the day gets long and the sun starts to sink, we should probably try a cookie to make sure yeah. they're okay. I mean, dinner's not ready yet. But... Like a little appetizer. Wow. It's got a, like, it's like a cookie. A real cookie. Moist. Mm-hmm. I could eat about 100, I like 26 that. of those. I know you could. You'll spoil your dinner, Mrs. I'm Farmer. I'm trying to save. Look at it. I need all mine. All right. And here's what it looks like when it's done. Yum. Look at that. So what we're going to do is cut a little section out. Look at there, Mrs. Farmer. That looks pretty. You did good. Doesn't that look pretty? Mm -hmm. Then we do a little bit more cheese. Yum. And a dollop. Okay. Big dollop. Yum. This is just me. I made a little bit of our homemade salsa across the top. Oh, yum. And a little cilantro. Look at that. Too pretty deep. Oh, no, it's not. Dig in. I want you to try it first. What do you think? Yum. It's a whole meal. So you got your cornbread on top, which almost gives it that tamale taste. You know what I'm saying? Are, this is really good. Now this takes 40 minutes to make, probably. If you really went fast and got all cut. Well, this mm. is a complete meal. You could probably feed six people yeah. easy. You could. And I mean, feed them well. Before I dig into this anymore, let's tell people about our page. Where would you go if you wanted to find more recipes? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Lots of cowboy cooking, lots of how-tos. Mm -hmm. One of our videos is approaching just one is approaching the million mark. Really? Took off. The segment where Marksbury cut up a beef mm -hmm. is way over the 900,000 mark. It took over the um, Old Time Hog Killing mm -hmm. and is now just killing it out there. So tell us what you like, tell us what you want to see, and you can do that by going to our Facebook page, right. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. All you gotta do is hit like, and boom, you're our friend. And we want to talk to you about recipes and all kinds of stuff, things that are coming up. But more importantly, we have to eat. That's real. And I'm starving. I am too, because we had a very busy day. So let's grab a bite or two. And meanwhile, tune in next week for a brand new show. And it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. I'm ready. ready. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.